hello everybody. Um, how is everybody feeling today? Today is, um, it's here in the UK. It's our last day before we um, head back into, into lockdown. I hope everybody is okay. How are we all feeling about that? Come and, um, come and let us know. Come and, come and let us know in the chat box. Um, we're obviously joined again by Natasha today, and I know that um, as, um, as I am, everybody's excited to, to welcome Natasha back. Mm -hmm. So we'll give the floor to Natasha in a second. But before I hand over to her, I just wanted to, to kind of have a quick word to, to tell everybody that when we started this network back in March of this year, uh, we very much made a commitment to, to kind of carry on for as long as it took whilst, um, whilst we were in this situation to help as many people as possible and to try and bring a bit of a cheer as much as we can and, um, and bring a resource where people can grow and learn and develop and what have you. Now, we know that we're going back into a month long lockdown as of tomorrow. We have been very, very busy behind the scenes looking into a new schedule, which, which kind of kicks off today really with Natasha, um, but we've got some amazing people coming up. Um, I'm in conversation with a law of attraction coach. I've got uh, a, a great motivational speaker coming up next week. And we've got a whole program in December, which we're getting our favorite guest back on to, um, to come and say hello. And we've got a theme running throughout December. Um, which is going to be great. And some of you may have already seen that we've got uh, an event coming up on November the 18th, which is centered around confidence. And we've got, um, we've got various people talking, talking about imposter syndrome. We've got someone talking um, about shyness and helping people come out of their shell. And um, a really inspiring lady to come and talk about kind of general confidence tips as well. So we've got lots planned for everybody. We're not just kind of going to disappear and um, um, disappear into the shadows because things are getting a bit dramatic again. In fact, quite the opposite, we're going to ramp it up. So um, it's great to have everybody on board. Thanks for all your comments. Come and say hello for the people that have just, um, just joined us. Um, but anyway, enough waffle from me. As always, this is never about me. It's all about our guests and, um, and the members of our community. It's, uh, it gives us great pleasure to, to reintroduce Natasha. The feedback from Natasha's first session has been fantastic. And uh, I know a lot of people have been looking forward to today. So welcome back, Natasha, and um, hope, hope all is well. How's things your end? Um, it's well, thank you. <laughs> I was just so focused on doing this. <laughs> so, but you know, all things considered, it's it's going well. Yeah, um, um, and hopefully, I can share some of that wellness vibes with the people on the call today. Good, I'm sure you can. So, um, look, I'll be here listening in, and um, Natasha's um, Natasha's got some great things prepared for us today, and I know that um, she's very happy to to answer anyone's questions yeah. and what have you. Um, at the end, if needs be. So over to you, Natasha. Do you okay. need? Um, do you need? Are you okay with sharing screens and stuff? Yeah, Is that all set up? I think I should be fine. And at one point, I might then just switch off the sharing screen and speak to you about something. I think you might know what it is when it comes up, and then I'll go back to sharing. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Cool. Okay. Cool. So let us start. Let me share my first screen. Uh, oh, host disabled participant screen sharing. So I think I need something from you in order to to share. Yeah, just bear with bear, bear with me. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, for some reason it's um, it's being a bit temperamental today. It's yeah. not letting it's not letting us do the bits and pieces. Um, I think if I'm a co-host, then I should be able to. Yeah, share. it's not letting me. Um, it's not letting me make you a co-host today for some reason. Ooh. I don't I don't know why that is. Um, it's the same as it wouldn't let me go live into. Um, into uh, into in, onto onto the other websites. That's weird. Yeah. Um, how do we do that then? Just mm. oh, wait there. a minute. I can share. I can share whatever you did. It's working. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna share. <laughs> okay. okay. Cool. Um, there we go. go. Play from the beginning. Ah, uh, there we go. And I'm just gonna minimize so I see myself. Okay, got it. Um, yes. So 
Thank you everyone for being here. Um, if it's your second time, thanks for coming back. If it's your first time, thanks for taking a chance. <laughs> and um, so I'm going to be speaking about how to feel on top of the world. And I know this is a bold statement, but I believe we can at least try to feel on top of the world at least most of the time. And hopefully this presentation will help you do exactly that. So first, let me just introduce myself. Um, so I'm Natasha King, coaching in brackets, because Coaching at the moment is still a side hustle. I'm a full-time PA and I've been a legal PA since 1997. And the whole journey towards becoming a life coach, focusing on resilience and wellness, started about five years ago, almost exactly five years. Um, I was working as a PA in a law firm. And after 11 years, of, but actually a bit more than 11 years, I said, it's time to rattle this comfort cage and I'm going to go for something different. So I left that job and I went for a job as a PA in the legal team of a media company. Now, that's a huge change to make. Um, it's a totally different ball game going from a place where everyone are lawyers to where the legal department is only a small part of a bigger business. Uh, and on top of that, I then decided that I have to, or I want to go and get re um, corrective surgery to my feet I, to fix feet problems that I've had for up to 40 years at that point, I think. Um, and that, in, that meant that my right foot was in a cast from my toes to my knees for eight weeks. Then I had six weeks of physio, then a six month break and did the same for my left foot. But Unbeknownst to me, for the left foot, I developed contact dermatitis from the plaster that they put on the incisions. And all I knew was my foot was on fire for 24 hours a day, eight weeks for, for eight weeks. Um, total constant burning sensation that never went away. And that really messed with my head. I had to learn to deal with anxiety, with a bit of depression. Um, with some irrational thoughts I had at one point I thought I wanted to hobble to the kitchen and get a pair of scissors and cut open this plaster cast just to get relief from the constant burn and of course I can't do that so that's where my whole idea of mind body and resilience actually kicked in where I had to do these things I had to use breathing and calming techniques um, and resilience thinking to overcome this so when the cast then came off, did the physio, recuperated a little, a little bit, I said, now I'm going to change jobs completely, or, or not completely. I went back to legal PA, but this time in a new firm, at a law firm as executive assistant. But I only stayed in that job for about five months, because I think looking back, I wasn't mentally strong enough yet after the job at this the, the media company and the um, the the surgeries so it it really um i kind of i i didn't last very long in that job and i'm going to tell you a story about that a bit later but i then took six months out to recuperate and in those six months i asked myself well how did i manage to overcome the difficulties of the, the surgery and it was looking at the end goal I had literally bought a pair of sandals and I put it in the bedroom and I was looking at those shoes and thinking I'm going through all this pain, all this uncomfortableness because I want to be able to wear any kind of shoes, throw away the orthotic insoles, walk long distances without any pain. So I kept that going. And how would I feel when I'm walking on the beach with my husband and all those lovely stuff that goes with it. And I use those same feelings as the way of finding my next job, which is the one I'm still in now. I thought, how do I want to feel when I'm in the office? How do I want to feel when I leave the office in the evenings? How do I want to feel on a Sunday evening knowing I've got to go to work tomorrow? How do I want to feel when I deal with the other lawyers in the firm? Um, and of course, I had a vision about the salary, um, the, the, the practical things like how, where the offices should be, um, what the kind of work I want to do. But the biggest thing was listening to my feelings because I had learned from the mistakes I'd made or the experiences I had in previous careers or jobs that the feelings was really important for me because that influenced my mind, my thinking, my behavior. And that now leads, leads us very nicely into what I wanna to talk to you about today. And let me just, ah, here we go. So what we will be discussing is your emotions as a guide. You can listen to your feelings to help you make decisions. And there are two ways of moving up the scale of emotions and I'll show you the scale. Um, those are self-care and gratitude. So let us start. 
So the, the big message in all of this is our emotions are a form of information. They give us wisdom and they guide us. So even though the feeling you're feeling is unpleasant, the whole idea of having emotions is a good thing, as long as you listen to what they're trying to say to you. And we get four types of feelings. It's the first one would be the happy feelings. Those are the ones we want the most of. Joy, love, passion, enthusiasm, be feeling content. Um, all those things tell us what we've gained. So if you look at any time you felt happy, there must have been something that you got from that experience. Say, for instance, Uber Eats sends you an email saying you get 10% off your next order. You feel happy when you get that email. And that's probably because you feel I'm being valued by this, by this company. They, they noticed how many times I've placed orders before and I'm being rewarded for this. I'm getting a reward. You feel you've gained some time because you now don't have to cook dinner tonight. But this is a very simple example, but it gives you an idea of how you can analyze a happy feeling in terms of what did I get out of it? And that means what I got out of it is important to me. Anxious feelings. Those are the fears, nervousness, dread, worry. They're usually the stress-related feelings. They tell us what we're afraid of. So, um, oh, for the moment, I can't remember what I'm prepared to say what we are afraid of. <laughs> um, oh, oh, me doing this presentation. See, this is exactly what happened. I was going to use the example of doing a presentation and being afraid that you might forget your words. Um, and that then teaches you something. And I was afraid of that might happen. So I practiced and I practiced and I practiced and I got a little lavender essential oils humidifier at my desk to keep me calm. So all of those things are telling me what I'm afraid of or anxious type of feeling tells me what I'm afraid of. And then you can go and think, well, what can I do to not be afraid? Um, sad feelings. Those are the grief, despair, uh, shame, guilt, unworthiness, powerlessness feelings. They tell us that you've lost something. So obviously guilt, I mean, not guilt, grief, you might have lost a person, but it could also be the loss of your freedom or a lifestyle. It could be the view from your bedroom window and that makes you sad because all of a sudden a high rise building has gone up. But in this time that we're going to into lockdown from tomorrow again, we feel might feel a bit powerless and despair because we lost our freedom and we lost choice of when do I go out and who can I see all of those things and that also means that if you're feeling sad because you lost that that means having that is important to you and that can teach you a valuable lesson when you need to go make future decisions angry feelings those are the rage frustrations irritability revenge feelings they tell us that something's being threatened something is under attack so say you go to the doctor to get a refill on your high blood pressure medication and they say, no, you're going to stay on the same tablets, but you now also need to change your diet and you get angry at the doctor. How dare he tell me I need to change my diet? But you, you're probably angry because your lifestyle, your choice of food, your, the way you cook is now being threatened. And there's a lesson in that. And loads of other examples you can think of all of these things in your life big and small but the feelings are telling us something and you can use these as clues then to help you make decisions so say i'm going to focus on the happy ones um, i always focus on the happy ones if you think of where do you go or what do you do and it makes you feel on top of the world say it is going for a walk in nature going to the beach or going to a park being surrounded by trees um, or the wind from the ocean, smelling the, 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 the sea salt, everything. You love being in nature. You can go for miles and miles and miles and you'll never get tired. If you get back into your car, you think I can tackle all my problems. I'm so energized and rejuvenated from being in nature. That tells you something. If you're in a stressful job and you can't get out of it for now, you, you're making plans, but you're still stuck there, but your happy place is being in nature, then try and incorporate that more into your day, into your week. You might even consider moving somewhere so it's closer to the beach if you can, or closer to a park so it's easier to go to where you generate the happy feelings. Um, if you can't even do that, pick up the seashells and bring them into your house. Buy house plants, fill your house with greenery. There's ways that your feelings can help you make decisions to make your life better, to make you feel better. And when it comes to our emotions, there's healthy behavior and there's unhealthy behavior. Healthy behavior would be to feel your emotion. 
feel your emotion fully and allow it to pass. So that means if you're angry, feel angry, but don't stay in the anger, feel it and let it do some, let it go into a different type of feeling. Um, if you want to cry, cry, get it out of your system and then let them pass and go into something else. But just don't get stuck in the negative feelings or the unpleasant feelings. Um, discharge your emotions through physical activity or sharing your thoughts. If you think of when you're really happy and you clap your hands, you jump up and down, that's that extra energy. We're discharging it. And you can do the same for the unpleasant feelings. You know, when you clench your fists and you, I'm so angry and we're going to do this. That's a natural response. You want to get rid of the extra energy or the, the, the feelings behind the emotion and then the energy behind the emotions. So any type of exercise, gardening, bathing the dog, doing cleaning the cupboards, that's doing something physical and it makes you feel better. You get rid of that excess energy. Journaling, oh my bullets just went funny. But anyway, journaling and doing art or speaking to someone are all versions of sharing your thoughts. You don't necessarily have to pick up the phone and talk to someone or get a therapist, talk to a therapist, a person, just putting your thoughts on paper, sharing your thoughts with a piece of paper, writing it down, um, art therapy, that's all, just as long as you get it out of your system, if you think about it that way, don't get it, let, don't let it get stuck in there. And then once you feel better, you can think clearer and you'll see the wisdom behind all of this, because when you're in the moment of an unpleasant feeling, it's difficult to have clarity. So you need to discharge it, feel it, let it allow it to pass. The unhealthy behavior then would be the opposite, which is to suppress your emotions. So when emotion comes up, you decide that you want to push it down by distracting yourself. So that's ignoring the feeling, doing something else, pretending you're not feeling it, or you do something where your chemicals change how you feel. So you will eat something, it's food, alcohol, recreational drugs, smoking, that kind of thing. It's say, for instance, you struggle with um, being assertive with the colleague at work that's really um, impacting you in a negative way. And instead of being assertive, you go to McDonald's, you comfort eat, or you drink something, or you take up smoking. This then can escalate into repressed emotions. That's when the emotion just automatically gets pushed down. You don't even think about it. It just happens. And you don't even need a chemical. It's just automatically there. And I actually now want to tell you a story about how I basically had some unhealthy um, behaviors around emotions. So I said in the beginning, I was on the, the job with the executive assistant for, for about five months. In that time, there was one evening I was walking home after work from the station and it was winter dark this time of the year. And I remember distinctly turning the corner into a quiet side street. And as I did that, I just thought, you know what? It wouldn't be so bad if I'm run over by a car in the street, I'll be okay with that if it's the end now. And I even went to the, the technicalities of thinking, well, this is a nice good street for this to happen and it's dark, I've got my earphones on, it would be a plausible thing that could happen. That was a warning bell. I had no idea that I was in that such a bad space. I knew things were tense, I wasn't super happy, but I didn't realize it was this bad. Um, went home, cried my eyes out, so that was, um, feeling the emotions and letting them pass. And then my husband and I said, well, we need to do something immediately. So we booked a holiday in Spain for I think five or six days just to get some sunshine, get away from everything, clear my head a bit. And then I went back to the office and I resigned and I took the time out, um, like kind of a career break. It turned out to be for six months, but I just said, I'm going to stop working. So that was 100% me having suppressed emotions, not dealing with it, not doing any of these discharging of emotions, none of those healthy behaviors. I wasn't doing that. And that's where I ended up at. And when we talk about emotions, you probably now want to know there's a scale of emotions. So I'll want to explain that your feelings are more than just a happy, anxious, angry, or sad. Those are the Words we describe, we used, to we used to describe our emotions, but they are so much more than that. It's not just, I'm happy. Um, there's levels of this. And that's the emotional guidance scales. I need to open, ah, oh, there you go. Here's the scale. 
um, there's 22 levels of emotions, but there are many more emotions. You can see that they are some of them on the same level. So whether you feel joy or whether you feel appreciation, it's the same um, vibrational energy. You're still on top of the world. They are equal. Joy, knowledge, empowerment, freedom, love, appreciation. They all feel really, really good. And then you go right down to the bottom. Um, and in my situation, I think I was hanging around in overwhelm for quite a while and I didn't notice this. If I had had this emotional guidance scale, I probably would have been able to pick up that I'm feeling overwhelmed and I should be on the lookout or do things to prevent me from going into the lower emotions, the doubts, the worries. Um, and this is a very good um, document to have at, ho at home. I have this on my website. You can go and download it from the freebies page. Um, because it's those times when we feel, I don't want to feel the way I'm feeling, but how do I feel? I can't describe it. I just feel icky. <laughs> I've used those words because we've got these vague terms of what we feel, but they are actually very specific emotions. So if I was on the overwhelmed bit and I noticed now I'm going into disappointment, that would tell me I'm slipping. I'm going down towards number 22 and I should pick myself up, literally pick up, go to the higher feelings, do what I can to prevent myself from getting into the reds and definitely from getting into number 22. Um, so if we talk about the first half of these emotions, those are the green ones. We want to hang around in those spaces as much as we can. This is the place where you want to be all the time. If you're getting to the orange ones, start wondering if this could go either way. Um, you just need to reach for the better feeling thought. That's the whole idea. Wherever you are, find a thought, any thought that will make you move up the scale. And, and if you know you're in hopefulness, feeling better would be optimistic. Um, so it's difficult to make the leaps from these really, say for number 10, like uh, what I say, irritation, up to enthusiasm. That's a big jump to make. But it can be done if you've got the perfect movie to watch. For me, it's Birdcage. By the way, Google the movie Birdcage. I can't get enough of it. And it gets me right up to number one instantly. You might have a playlist. Um, something you do that you know always makes you feel good. Then keep doing that. Other times, you, if you, especially in the lower ones, you just need to move up one. So you just need to find a thought that could be instigated by a, a, something you do or just a memory or anything that just moves you up. Um, it's an uplifting thought. That's what we're going for. When we're going to the bottom half, these are the heavier feelings, the, the more difficult ones to deal with. Remember that anger still feels better than jealousy and blame still feels better than revenge. So like in my situation, if I was getting, I was say I was in um, disappointment. If I slip down into worry, that's not a good sign. But if I'm in disappointment and I go up to 11, it's like, whoa, I've made an improvement. You need to know where you are. And either way, if it's better than the previous thought, you've moved up. So you will continue to move up as long as you notice that there's an improvement. Like, well done me, I've, I'm, I'm feeling better. That's the whole point of this. I am feeling better. And just saying I'm feeling better makes you feel even better. But the further down the scale you are, the more effort you might need to put into reaching the better thoughts because they are heavy and they're more difficult to push out of. And it's very easy to slip down. And if you're right at the bottom, it's a bit more difficult to go up. So the things that you can do to get you to move up if you're in the really low ones are self-care and gratitude. Those like magic bullets, they will immediately make you feel better. And when it comes to self-care, we know self-care is about taking care of ourselves, spending the times on ourselves, spending time on ourselves to make us feel good, to make us feel better so we can um, be of better service to others and to take care of ourselves. But self-care is not measured by the amount of money you spend. You don't need to buy fancy bubble bath, sit in a bath with golden taps overlooking the ocean in order to benefit from the bubble bath. Normal radox will do it. And that's despite what social media tells you. If you go on, um, what's it, self-care Sunday hashtags, and you see all these fancy images of people doing the most expensive, most elaborate things, it doesn't need to be that. Don't get sucked into the marketing thing. It just needs to make you feel good. And anything that, even if it doesn't cost money, maybe the most things that does, doesn't cost money is going to do that. Self-care is also not an excuse to spoil yourself, 
by doing the things that you know are not good for you. So if you're on a diet, don't use food as a form of self-care. If you're trying to save money, don't buy something as a form of self-care because the effect will be that you're feeling guilty and you want to feel good. So just be wary of this. Do something that you know, don't do the things that you know are not good for you. And self-care is 100% not selfish. Self-care is self-care. Self-care is not selfish. You owe it to yourself to do the things that makes you reach that better feeling thought to move up the scale. And when it comes to examples of self-care, you'll see that a lot of them are actually linked to this idea of sharing your thoughts and um, uh, getting using physical activity to get rid of the excess emotions. Self-care examples kind of correlate with that. So it's a very good way of dealing with emotions. You can listen to an uplifting music, podcast, or audiobook. And I say uplifting there because listening to a conversation on the radio about COVID is not going to make you feel better. Choose something uplifting. Go for a walk alone or go for a walk with a friend. There's a difference because one day you want to be on your own. Tomorrow you want to go for a walk, yes, but you don't want to share your thoughts or you do want to share your thoughts. Um, exercise, if that makes you feel better, then do that. Have a bubble bath, creative writing and journaling. Um, order a takeaway and then use that free time to do something else. It's not the act that you are getting the takeaway. It's the fact that it frees up your time to do something that will make you feel better. You can read something, but also uplifting. That would be really good for making yourself feel better. Do gardening if you like that. But if you don't like gardening, get a gardening service and use that time to do something else on this list. Make a fire and grill a steak. That's one we have mostly for the guys. And in the winter, come, coming from South Africa, weather doesn't change the fact that you would like to do a barbecue. Then you go out in the hail and the rain and you barbecue if that's going to make you feel good. Try out a new recipe. And medication and supplements. So there's an asterisk next to this because it's not technically self-care in the way that these other ones are. But it is taking care of yourself. So if you need to take medication for depression, anxiety, um, high blood, um, diabetes, whatever it is, continue to take that medication, you will feel better. Um, and if you can, add some supplements, um, especially now vitamin C. The NHS guidelines is 40 milligrams per day is the minimum. You can go up to 1,000. Um, some people experience some, some stomach ache if they have more than 1,000 milligrams a day. So that's just a guide. But definitely supplements and medication is self-care. Um, and remember, you have to feel good, not guilty afterwards. And what you need may change from day to day. And this, if you notice your feelings and you match your self-care activity to how you feel, that'll make it easier to just pinpoint your feelings. It kind of gets you into the habit of listening to yourself um, and then adjusting your self-care to that. So here's a self-care plan. And this comes from my free um, seven day, no, 14 day, seven email, feel supported email course. I think it's the first day where you just click on the link in the email and you can download this. So what it basically is, is you're making a plan. You say, I will take care of myself in these different ways. So you think in advance, what's the stuff that I like? So you don't need to go, mm, I don't know what I want to do today. You already know. And you have a time and a date and a frequency and a duration set aside for your self-care. Then the num box number three is the things you can do or you have to do to make sure you stick to this. So if it is baking something, make sure you've got the ingredients. If it is listening to a podcast while you walk, it means downloading and making sure your phone is charged. Even things like what you're going to say to the kids or your husband if they interfere with your self-care time. What's your line? What you're going to distract them with? Um, the last one is how do you feel afterwards? Because we want to measure how good this is for us. And remember we said on the scale, once you notice you feel better, you're moving up the scale. So how do I feel before it? How do I feel afterwards? And if this thing works for me, I keep doing it. If it doesn't, I need to maybe adjust it. So you can get this from my um, email course, but I'll tell you about that at the end. <laughs> um, then gratitude. This one, oh, I love everything to do with gratitude because it's the fastest way to move up the sky scale and it feels so good to do. And gratitude has lots of benefits and it's not just feeling better. It also has physical changes that happens in our bodies 
when we are grateful for something. When you say thank you, thankfulness, count your blessings, call it what you want, it has a huge impact. First thing, or one of the stuff, is it releases dopamine and serotonin, which enhances your mood immediately. So that's the feel-good hormones. This is from a study of two, in 2009. You say great, you, you count your blessings, you immediately feel better. It also lowers the cortisol, which is the stress hormone, which on the long term gives you better heart function and more resilience. That's a study from 1998. So in one go, you're upping your feel-good hormones, you're lowering your stress hormones. I mean, that's like a magic bullet. I love it. So um, gratitude makes us more optimistic. It was shown that regular gratitude journaling showed an increase of 5 to 15% in optimism. That's a study from 2014. You naturally have a more optimistic view of the world by being grateful. And this study was showed that 16% of patients who kept a gratitude journal read brought to the reduction in their pain symptoms, more willingness to exercise, more hours of quality sleep, and they were willing to stick to their prescriptions. So this is all called from the study called the Counting Blessings versus Burden Study. Very cool name, I think, from 2003. They took two groups of people who were receiving medical treatment. Nothing else changed, except for the fact that half of them kept a list of what they were grateful for, the other half a list of what they felt neutral about or that irritated them. And by doing this, by being grateful, they were, they improved their health and they stuck to their prescribed treatments and the exercise the doctors gave them. And then they reduced some, some symptoms of pain. And that's because optimism is believing that things will get better. So you could be overly positive, which means you gloss over things. It's like you pretend nothing's wrong. But optimism, optimistic people will say, Yes, something's bad, like in this study, the counting blessings versus burdens. Yes, I'm ill. I'm receiving treatment by a doctor, but I believe things will get better because I'm showing this gratitude. And that means I will do my part. I will take my medicine. I will do the exercises. Um, so it's a very healthy mental attitude to have is, is optimism. You still take action. You don't pretend everything is fine when it's not. And there is always something to be grateful for. I know people say, yes, you've got a, you're perky and sunny and you're optimistic view, but I honestly do believe, and I'm gonna show you a trick where you can see this for yourself. So if you think gratitude is a different word for thankfulness, which is a different word for saying thank you, okay, of a way of saying thank you. And we say thank you a lot in our days without even putting any gratitude feelings behind it. It's an automatic reply. You just do it out of good manners. But if you stop and think, well, why did I just say thank you? You can start this avalanche of gratitude. And that could be things like in an email where someone sends you something, you type the words thank you as an automatic response, but just take a minute. So say for instance, you go to Costa and you're in Costa, you placed your order, you got your coffee, you paid, you turned around and you just say thanks as you walk out. No emotions behind it. You're not really grateful in the sense of, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, that kind of way. You just said the words. But now if you stop and think, why did I say the words? You think, well, okay, I was in Costa, I, got, I bought a coffee. Well, that would mean I've got money in the bank or some sort of overdraft or something. <laughs> I've got the capabilities of buying a coffee. There's a place like Costa that exists that makes coffee. All they do is roast coffee beans. All they do is train their baristas to make me my coffee the way I like it. And I can change my mind from today to tomorrow, or I can go to the same place and they'll even remember what I ordered. That's just magical. If I've got the coffee in my hands, that means I have taste buds. I can smell, I can hear, I can feel the heat. I can taste the coffee. All of that, my senses are working to make me enjoy this cup of coffee. Um, you can think, well, if I'm in Costa, how did I get here? If I walked here, that means my body is able to bring me on its own to a place like this. I can walk my feet, coming, me especially coming with history of foot surgeries, it's a blessing to be able to walk. Um, if you drove there, that means you've got a car, you've got a car with petrol, you found parking, <laughs> that's a blessing. You took public transport. We live in a, in a world or in a, in a, in a country with an effective public transport system. And same coming from South Africa, not all countries have that. That's a blessing. So you can see how one word 
even without meaning, when you stop and think about it, can turn into this avalanche of gratitude. If you're sitting on the sofa and you ask someone to pass you the TV remote, think, once they do and you say thanks, that means I'm in a house, I've got Netflix, I paid for Netflix, my internet is working, I've got a sofa, I'm warm and snug inside. So that's a tip for, even when you think nothing is going well, just think about the last time you said the word thanks and then start playing with that and get this avalanche of gratitude. Then you can take it one step further by showing someone else that you are thankful. So now it's a two for one. You are showing gratitude with all those dopamine levels and serotonin that drop, all that benefits come to you. Plus you're showing kindness. The person on the other end is experiencing kindness out of the blue and they feel valued. That's such a lot of positive energy going on there. So you can show gratitude by sharing that gratitude, share the love, write a thank you note. And I'm saying write, not take a screen grab from Google images with a bunny and the words thank you. And this is what you send as a WhatsApp. I mean, literally write it in a card or a piece of paper. And that means you would have needed to um, think a bit about this. Um, find the person's address, find a stamp, go to the post office. Um, think, take the, 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 the focus away from yourself, because if you're writing a thank you note, you can say, well, what would, what do I think this person would really appreciate today? And you need to prepare what you're saying, because you don't have autocorrect, and typex doesn't look nice on a handwritten note, so think before you write it down, and your handwriting is on there, it has such a lot more power, and you will feel absolutely brilliantly, because for a while, the attention wasn't on you and you shifted it to focus on someone else. So saying that, I just quickly want to stop sharing my screen and then I'm going to speak to Paul about something. Okay, Paul. Well, hello, hold on, hello. I'm just getting yeah. my screen back. Hold on one second. <laughs> hello there. Mm. So can you tell us something about thank you notes? <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you something about thank you. Mm, notes. Imagine that. <laughs> yes. Can everybody see this? So this came through. Um, this came through through the post. I think I received it on Monday, um, and it was a lovely thank you note from Natasha, actually, um, who um, was thanking me for bringing her on to the community mm. um, and said some lovely words about um, about how supportive and how great the members of the community are. Um, and it and, was, uh, and it, how did you feel when you got the card? You, you weren't expecting it. I, weren't expe I wasn't expecting it at all. It, it, was, um, it was great. I mean, I'd, I'd, we never put this, um, this network together to, to kind of um, get praise and bits and pieces, but it's always nice when people take time out of their day to, to do things like that. So it was, um, it, was a lovely, it was a lovely little token and a really, really nice gesture. Um, and it's had pride of place on my, uh, my, my home desk ever since. Okay, well, I'm very glad you say that because that correlates with my next bit. I, by the way, people, I told um, Paul to not say anything. He didn't know what I was going to talk about. Um, this is all non-scripted. Okay, so I'm going to go back to sharing my screen and I'll take it further. Um, oh, where are we going? Where is it? Ah, there we go. Uh, oh, good. Okay, got it. Oh, I thought I clicked the wrong button, but I didn't. So you write a thank you note. And actually, this was thank you notes and writing the thank you note was part of a study in 2018, conducted by the University of Texas and Chicago. Now, firstly, let it sink in that these people took the time to study the effects of writing a thank you note. That's just blowing my mind already. Okay, so what they did is they took a group of 100 people and they asked them to write thank you notes to something they were thankful for. Then the writers were asked to rate how surprised, awkward or happy they thought the people would be when they received these cards. And the recipients were asked to say how do they feel when they got the upon receipt of these thank you notes. But the senders, the writers of these cards, first thought that most people would say they felt awkward. Like, this is a bit weird. They're going to think strange for this random, not random, but even person I know to take the time. It's just an odd thing to do. This is how they thought people would feel. But in fact, most recipients felt ecstatic. They measured at five out of five. And the average was happy. They rated four. So the average is four out of five. Not one person felt awkward. 
So if you are considering writing a thank you note, do it because no one will feel it's awkward. No one will, no one will think you're weird. They'll just feel ecstatic or happy. Scientifically proven people, you can go and do it. Um, so to sum up, use your feelings as clues to help you make decisions. That's what they're there for. They guide us, they give us wisdom, things we might not think about, they're telling us something. And it's healthy to feel your emotion fully and then allow it to pass. Don't hang around in the bad places, in the unhappy, the, the unhappy feelings. And discharge your emotions through physical activity or by sharing your thoughts. And we've discussed this, so this could be with sharing it on paper as well, not just person to person. And the two ways of moving up the scale to make you feel on top of the world, to make you feel better, is self-care. Take the time to do something that will make you feel better. And gratitude, it's rocket fuel for feeling better. And that can include writing those thank you notes. So gratitude, I, oh, I can't go on enough about this. Oh, sorry, there is one more thing I can say. When it comes to gratitude, don't get hung up on the fact that, especially in the, these studies that I showed you, people were writing it down in a gratitude journal. If, you are, if it's causing you more stress to find the time to keep a journal, then don't worry about it. Just be grateful. Do it as part of your day. It's a very good way of getting into the habit of gratitude. It's a great way of seeing the effects of it. If you write it down like yesterday, um, I was grateful for these five things. And you can see how your list expands and it gets easier. And that's a measurable value. But if that's going to cause you more stress to find the time to have a journal where you write it down, just think. I'm grateful for this. I'm counting my blessing. I'm sitting on the sofa and I'm listing and listing and listing more blessings. So yeah, don't get caught up or hung up about having to write it down. And this is my feel supported email course that I told you about. So the self-care is the time for, has the time for me plan. And there are other topics, self-esteem, power of words, images, negative thoughts, gratitude, optimism. And you can sign up for this on natashaking.com. And some days have worksheets. Other days have a fun experiment. There's a few that I ask you to take photos. You've got nothing to lose. Just every day or every second day for 14 days around seven o'clock in the morning, you'll get an email quickly to read and you'll feel supported. It will give you some tips and um, helpful advice to feel better and feel supported and then the big one actually is this one the special offer which which i have it's a 90 minute laser focused coaching sessions that i'm offering for 15 people watching this video i could say the bsn community but i know this video is shared on the bsn website as well so the first 15 people and what we do is we focus on one issue and we sort it out together. We tackle it with laser focus. And some of the things we can work on is career goals, health goals, self-esteem, stress, feeling stuck. I know feeling stuck <laughs> isn't a coaching term, but if you're feeling stuck, you know what feeling stuck means. And usually my rates are about 80 pounds for an hour. So this is longer for less money. And same thing, just go to natashaking.com and you can use the contact form to tell me you're interested in this. And I'll set, we'll talk about the technicalities of setting this up or LinkedIn. So I really wanted to offer this to the community to help as many people as quickly as possible because it takes less time than the usual way of coaching and it's cheaper than the usual way of coaching. So hopefully you will take up the offer and I'd love to help you. So that's it. Oh, and now I can breathe. <laughs> well done, the session was great as, it was great as always. Of course you can breathe. Yeah. I get so excited and like, oh, I just want to fit in more and more and more in what I'm saying. <laughs> no, you're a natural at this, which is, uh, which is why it's great to have you on. Um, oh. And it's nice, to, it's nice to kind of get raw feelings from people as well, you know, that, um, you know, people kind of put in... You know, putting their heart and soul into things. So um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's lovely to see. Oh. I know that Natasha is um, is here and available. If anyone wants, if anyone has got any questions for Natasha, yeah. I know that she would um, she would happily ask that ask um, uh, sorry answer any here and now. Mm. Um, whilst we're waiting to see if anybody has got um, a question for you, there's some lovely um, some yeah. lovely comments. I'm in. looking. There's so many comments trying to. Yeah, there's lovely comments in, in the chat box about people. Um, um, what I like to, what, 
what Mandy's saying is is really nice about getting getting a handwritten note mm -hmm. um, and, and and a lovely feel good factor um, about it. It's um it's especially nice in the in the kind of day the modern days of internets and emails and direct yeah. messages and and bits and pieces like that. So yeah, um, it's it's so easy to just go into WhatsApp and you can even just send a GIF. And I mean the the gesture is fantastic. It's don't stop doing that, but having something personal just adds an extra dimension. And I promise you, you feel so good for doing that. It's, I don't know how it works. Oh, actually, I should know. It's the grat grat the gratitude part of it that you are you noticing your gratefulness. But when you're writing the card and deciding on the pen and the color and um, doing a little bit of creativeness, if you want, and just thinking what would, so, so the example with for, for Paul's, when I bought the, the postcard, I was thinking, dream big. I think he would like that. That would resonate with him. So the focus wasn't on me, it was on him. Um, and that really shifts your energy and you get a buzz from that. That's so amazing. And um, I think once you start doing it, you just don't stop. I did this a while ago for the HR manager at my previous firm and another lady that I was coaching and they didn't expect it. Um, and actually, oh, for the lady I was coaching, I actually wrote a poem. I didn't write the poem. I copied it from a book. But I, I knew that it would mean something to her. Um, and it did. And I had no idea when it would arrive. I, did, I didn't know everything was going on in her life. I knew something, but this poem spoke to other parts. And you just trust your intuition. And that also gives you a little bit of a buzz by helping someone on a level you might not even be aware of. Hmm. No, it's a, it's a, it was a really nice gesture, as, a, as I say. So, yeah, I can, I can definitely back up everything that you that you've said there. And... Um, the front of it, dream big, is um, it very much hit the nail on the head of, on on the head of how I kind of think about things. So, mm -hmm. so, uh, I yeah, so. yeah, I thought I thought it was great. So, um, so yeah, so no questions coming through, but, okay. but lots of lots of positive lots of positive comments. People saying how um, how helpful and insightful the session was with great energy and people saying that they're going to take lots away lots of people thanking you Natasha, as well so um so yes thank you um you know on behalf of everybody that's here uh natasha thanks for your time that's that's two sessions mm -hmm. um i know that people really enjoyed the first one and clearly people have really enjoyed this one so what we'll do uh, natasha and i will kind of have a conversation from here to, to see um, to see if Natasha can kind of contribute in some way further down the line mm -hmm. to, to, to the growing network. Um, as I say, we've got lots of things planned over, over the coming month. We're, we've got lots of different webinars taking place. Um, we're about to announce a, a, an incredible speaker who's coming, uh, who will be on this time next Wednesday um, with lots of other bits and pieces coming up as well. As I say, we've got a law of an we've got a law of attraction coach, which I know lots of people have been talking about over the, the last kind of couple of years or so. So I think that will be of great interest. Um, and if anybody is interested in our confidence event, I've just put the um, to the links up in the chat as well, which is on November the 18th, which is from 6 p.m. in the evening. So um, if anybody, um, unless anyone else has got anything else to say, once again, Natasha, thank you for your time today. Thanks for um, all the hard work for, for preparing, um, you know, so, some, some great slides and some great advice. Um, but always thanks for you guys for listening in and mm. uh, tuning in without your guys support we can't kind of carry on doing this so uh thanks for giving up your time to listen to to natasha we really really appreciate it we do thank you so much and especially for me as a kind of newbie to talking to people that really i love it thank you for being here <laughs> good what, what, what wonderful energy and thanks um thanks so much for everything natasha we really really pleasure. appreciate it um yes link we mentioned um yeah, so Lynn, the, the event speakers that we have um, is, um, yes, you're right, we've got Simon Alexander Ong, who, I mean, he's just incredible. He's done bits and pieces for the BBC, Sky News, kind of every single huge corporate Google, Facebook sale, um, sales force, uh, a wonderful speaker. We've also got um, a lady called Madeline McQueen, who is a, a huge podcaster, author, and what have you and um she has got a she's got a specific 
uh, podcast around confidence. There is another lady called Nadia Feiner, who is known as the psychologist. She's a uh, award-winning author. She's also a podcaster. She's been on the BBC as well, where she coaches shy individuals to, to help come out of their shell. And we've got another individual called Berju Erdam, who is an imposter syndrome specialist as well. Um, and um, not that anybody will be interested in this, but I am hosting the event and get the honor to, to kind of welcome everyone on stage when, um, when, that, when they come on board. So um, hopefully that answers your question, Lynn, about the speakers. And he's a neighbor of yours. Oh, brilliant. Oh, oh fantastic. Wow. Um, that's, yeah, I can, I can imagine that's, that, that is very lucky for you. He can, he can kind of give you a daily G up if you, if you, if you need it. So, um, we, we hope to see everybody there on November the 18th. So, um, so yes. So look, um, thanks once again for, for your time, everybody stay positive. The month will be over soon and I promise you we'll, um, we'll keep you occupied and we'll do everything we can to, to keep the, to, the sessions going, keep them interactive, keep you guys learning and keep you guys upbeat and positive throughout the time that we're off. So thanks for your support, everyone. Thank As you, always, everyone. We really appreciate it. And thank you, Natasha. My pleasure. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> no worries. We'll see you all soon. Okay. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye.